All right. Our next guest has been pushing Congress, introducing a bill to move the Secret Service from one department to another, from Homeland Security back to under the wing of the Treasury Department. Joining us now is Tennessee Congressman David Kustoff. Congressman, good to see you today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you say it's the Secret Service. You're, you want them to move under, to, under, again, the Department of the Treasury to a wing there. Why? Yeah. Well, so it's a great question. We all know the events that have happened almost one month ago, I guess one month ago right now with, with uh, the assassination attempt of President Trump. I have felt like, and, and I think the viewers who are watching know that the Secret Service does more than offer presidential protection and protection to other members of, of the federal government. They're involved in, in bank fraud, cyber crime. Of course, when they were created by President Abraham Lincoln, they were originally uh, created to combat counterfeiting, which, which is still part of the responsibility. I, I, I'm a former United States attorney. I've dealt with the Secret Service professionally as a, as a federal prosecutor, still deal with the Secret Service now, think that the rank and file men and women do a good job and they're committed to their jobs. But to me, it's always been a better fit for the Secret Service based on, on everything that they do to be part of the Treasury Department. And, and until 20 years ago, until the creation of the Department of Homeland Security, they were under the Department of Treasury when the DHS was commit, was uh, commissioned and created in the early 2000s, the Secret Service moved from the Treasury Department to DHS. And I think we've seen now, especially in the Biden administration, all the taxing and tolling on the DHS as it relates to the situation uh, at the border and beyond. The Secret Service, it, frankly, is a better fit under the Treasury Department. And I think that they would get more time, attention, and the proper supervision for everything that they do in the Department of Treasury. Uh, Congressman, I do want to get to this. Uh, you recently wrote an op-ed detailing a trip that you took to Israel and also your meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, uh, you specifically said that Israel's need for unwavering U.S. support continues. And you also say, this is the part that I want to ask you about, it's time for the United States to lead on the world stage again. Be specific about what you mean by that. Yeah, I, I, there's no doubt that the Biden-Harris administration has vacillated in terms of their public support for Israel. And I think I'm being kind with that. They, they, we know what they really believe, and we know that there's a tremendous progressive push from the left wing of, of their party to back off U.S. supporting Israel. You know, I, I know that I voted in April to, to give aid and support to Israel. I anticipated that Israel would get all the equipment, all, all the artillery, all, everything that they needed to continue to defend itself. And President Biden in May held up on essential equipment that Netanyahu needs. That's a bad signal for the rest of the world, especially for Israel's enemies like Hamas, the Hezbollah, and especially Iran. But, but the other point is, just a few weeks ago, we had Prime Minister Netanyahu give this joint address to Congress, which those are important speeches. Mm -hmm. They are historic. We in the United States watch, the people around the world watch. To not have the Vice President of the United States preside, sitting next to the Speaker of the House, for, uh, for the reason that she wanted to go to Indiana and campaign, I think is absolutely unconscionable. She should have been there in that chair, whether uh, she agreed with everything Netanyahu was going to say or not. He, he's a world leader. He deserves that respect. And she abdicated. So my point is the U.S. needs to stand in full support of Israel. Our leadership, both Democrats and Republicans, need to be there and, and, and make sure that the rest of the world knows that we are the strongest ally for Israel, mm -hmm. that it can be, especially in these dangerous times. Yeah, ec excellent point, Congressman. Seeing, uh, I will say, the empty seat where Vice President Kamala Harris should have been was an embarrassment to our country, but also, as you pointed out, disrespectful. And again, listen, she's running for president. you got to learn how to have meetings with people you might not agree with. So again, I would say that's uh, failure number one, uh, at least in that point, for Absolutely. Kamala Harris. Yeah. All right, Congressman.